It's the Wendy Williams Show. Wendy, HSN. <laughs> Let's get started, it's time for Hot Topics, come on. Aguilera, who I love her. I think she's got one of the most original voices. I totally got what she was saying when they tried to push her into a particular type of singer back when she had Jeannie in a Bottle. That was when she was more of top 40 um, girl. And we, knew, we didn't know she had all the funk in her voice. Like she knows how to get down. Yeah. And so I love her, but she says she's done with the voice. Well, she hasn't been on the voice in a moment. And she was there the first season. She was there the first season and she was on and off on that show, if you recall, throughout the seasons. But she was recently speaking with Billboard magazine and she says the show was a churning hamster wheel. <laughs> it made her feel suffocated and restricted. She said in this article that the voice isn't about music, it's about making good moments on TV. Duh. <laughs> I, I, I mean, where has she been? These, uh, you know, you had an example of American Idol and other shows, or yeah, American Idol, and other shows before that. Like those, nobody cares about the contestants. People care about the judges, what the judges are wearing, and how the judges are getting along, and what's going on in their personal lives. And even The Voice, which is probably the most credible um, of these shows on TV, I don't know anyone who's won The Voice. <laughs> I tune in. I tune in to see Blake, and how he was getting along with. Um, Gwen, oh, his smile, Aww. right? <laughs> I think maybe um, when they asked her, she should have just said, it was an interesting experience and I had a good time and moved on. But instead she talked about it and it kind of sounds like sour grapes, I'll tell you why because Alicia Keys and Gwen Stefani and Miley Cyrus and Kelly Clarkson have all been on the show and they're lovable judges. From what I understand, I don't tune in all the time, but lovable judges. And as far as that personal life thing, like they don't do A Keys dirty like that. Is she still on the show? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. They all come and go. Yeah. Yeah. I think that maybe um, Christina, because she'd been on and off for so, um, so many times and she was an original judge the first season, she probably had her people call up and say, you know, hey, you know, can we come back on? And they probably said, no, we don't need you anymore. Aww. You know, and, but one thing that I do believe, I do believe is you know, she was saying she felt constricted. What she could wear as far as clothes, what the makeup could be, what the hair could be. Well, yeah, you're not on stage doing dirty with a red man. <laughs> you know? You're, I mean, it's still a family show, so you can't come out there with chaps and nothing else. <laughs> and we know that she has a particular style. She enjoys her sexuality, and, and that's great, but not for a family show. So if they were knocking on her dressing room and telling her you can't wear this, <laughs> Then, 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 then fire your agent or your manager for dragging you into something that you did not do any research on. Oh. And, and, and 
I never saw anything for the few times that I watched the show. I never saw anything with, wrong with the outfits that she was wearing. I mean, my gosh, we sat there with you through your weight going up and going down. <laughs> we sat there through you with your outfits. I didn't see anything wrong with her outfits. The red lip is everything. The clear lip is everything. Just, I like her. Yeah. But here's the thing. She, uh, she hasn't dropped a single um, in, or an album in six years. And so the first single from her album is coming out, I think it might be out as we speak. See, she's scrambling for what to do in a Rihanna world now, <laughs> you know? She's scrambling, and, 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 and I don't know what to tell you, uh, Christina, but you know, keep your sour grapes to yourself and keep on singing. And, and good luck. And I, and I hope that you're single is battle ready for a Rihanna world? Right? Ryan. Speaking of Rihanna, <laughs> Rihanna is on the cover of Vogue magazine. And <laughs> I feel like they always have the same cover people in all these magazines, so to me this is not a big deal. Another pretty picture of Rihanna, she looks great. Anyway, inside, she's talking in the interview and she says she's no longer friends with Drake. She, she admits um, that they had been dating on and off since 2009. And then fans fell in love with them as a couple. Well, I have to tell you something. In our bureau meeting this morning, none of us could ever remember them legitimately dating, like holding hands and stuff like that. You know, at least when Jennifer Lopez goes out with Alex, um, they're, they're holding hands like a couple. They're, they're a couple, but this right here is not a date. And him going on stage and pro professing his love to her is not a date. That's what I call a stunt. You know, them falling out of a club together at three o'clock in the morning, getting in the same car service and going back to the hotel, that's not a date, that's a thang. Uh, you know. Or a, a boyfriend, you know? I never knew that they were really boyfriend and girlfriend. But remember, uh, that was um, at the uh, Vanguard Awards, at the VMAs, where she got the Vanguard Award, it was at the VMAs, and Blake let her know that she will always be the love of his life. I'm sure she's very lovable. But um, I, I suspect another stunt. Another, have you ever seen them holding hands? In the middle of the day, I'm not talking about drunken at three o'clock in the morning, falling out of a club. I didn't say holding each other up. I said, I said holding hands. I never have, think about it. Anyway, so she tells um, Vogue that she waited through this speech where he was talking about how he loves her and she was really uncomfortable because she doesn't, like too many compliments. And um, when um, she was asked about Drake, she winced. At the, the writer of the article says she winced. Like, and she says, they don't have a relationship now. They aren't enemies either. She says, it is what it is. Listen, don't feel sorry for either of them. First of all, <laughs> Rihanna has moved on to the count. Now we don't talk about, oh, you don't know about the count? <laughs> he does. He, he's taking his title so literally. He looks, looks like a, a count about to bite her in the neck. Look. <laughs> Here's the deal. In the article, she says she feels guilty for giving so much into her work and never really taking time out for a personal life. And Rihanna is no longer in her 20s. How old is she now? 30. 30. Even, yeah. So, you know, she's been around for a moment, and so now she's comfortable, and she says she met someone who was worth taking time out. And this is The Count. The Count is a Saudi businessman. His name is Hassan Jamil, and he's 29. Now, he's been married before. Uh, his family is worth $2.2 billion, billion. <laughs> The family, exclusive, the family owns exclusive rights to Toyota cars in Saudi Arabia and seven other countries. And you know those Toyotas run very well. <laughs> you know what I mean? They last at least 150,000 miles. <laughs> it's a good one. 
the thing about this guy, though, is he likes a showgirl. He used to date Naomi Campbell. Which I kind of don't like that part, you know what I mean? I kind of wish that we didn't know that he was already into dating showgirls and everything. And I don't know who his ex-wife is. And I don't know whether they, um, he and his ex-wife had children together. He is cute there in that picture though, right? Mm. Well. Um, people, people in my morning meeting said if they got married, they'd be more powerful than Jay-Z and Beyonce. Why are you comparing them, I, t I said in my meeting. What are you talking about? Jay-Z and Beyonce are in entertainment. The Count is a businessman, and Rihanna is a businesswoman with, uh, a singer with plenty of her own money. The thing is, is if she takes it all the way, does she have to do the Janet Jackson? And, and... <laughs> and move to a far off land? And obey family tradition? and swath her body in black material so you can only see her eyes? <laughs> Does she have to do that and then only give birth to a boy? <laughs> and then once she comes to her sen senses, lose all the weight and run off and go on world tour? <laughs> well, Rihanna, you're still young enough. You know, you live, this, date and, and date a lot, but this is an interesting relationship with the Count. I don't know that I want them to take it all the way. I think that a lot of times we girls here, we sacrifice a lot for another culture in another far off land. You know, I like culture, but I like culture like at the Gracidis up the street. <laughs> you know? There's a lot wrong with America, but there's a lot right with it too. And I definitely wouldn't forfeit anything about being America and my freedoms that I have here. I, I still feel that, I feel that way. I feel that way. Well, the royal wedding is in 15 days. And the streets are abuzz. Well, Meghan Markle's brother, Harry, wants it called off. Now look, Harry's a mess, okay? Harry Markle, here he is. Markle. Uh, Thomas Markle, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, who was this, Thomas? That's Thomas, yeah, Thomas. Well, he doesn't look like he'd put a gun to somebody's head. <laughs> oh, there's a picture, there he is. Yeah, no, okay, <laughs> there he is. Thomas is married, his wife has a record or has been arrested and she's got a rap sheet. He's got a rap sheet. And, she, and he put a gun to someone's head. He's also a lot older than Megan, and I believe it's all sour grapes. Margo, uh, Thomas Markle wrote a letter to In Touch Magazine. I mean, it's right there with the staple page. It's two pages, like, whoa, <laughs> right? On and on and on. Handwritten, writing it to Prince Harry. Look, at dear Prince Harry. <laughs> Asking him to cancel the wedding saying the wedding will be the biggest mistake in royal wedding history, <laughs> saying that Meghan is jaded, shallow, and conceited, <laughs> saying that she'll make a joke of royal heritage, <laughs> and he called her a C-level actress. <laughs> he says, he says, well, I didn't know her before. Maybe she was a C-level actress, but now she's gonna be a prince, and so what are you, jealous? Yeah. Princess. <laughs> I didn't know her. So um, he says in this letter that she's sh uh, shown her true colors by inviting strangers to the wedding instead of the family. So clearly this man is delusional. He does not understand you know, what you have to do. He's a bit jealous because he's not in Megan's li life. But there's a part of what he says, and I am not the only one who believes this, so I'm, but I'm the only one sitting here. Don't call me a hater. <laughs> but I do believe there's a lot of opportunists in Meghan Markle. And I've said that since, if you recall, when these people first got together and we were all whooping and cheering and everything, it might have been about one or two weeks before it went by, and I said, uh-uh, okay, let's see what happens. Let's see how, I didn't even think they'd make it to the altar, because I figured something would go awry regarding her. And perhaps um, social climbing, opportunistic, 
conceited way. I, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, okay, I mean, we're all happy for her, but um, I think she's up to something and, and, and yeah. you do? You do? I'm with you on this, 100% I'm with you on this. Like, look, Suzanne, are you serious? Are you, are you, I'm, I'm serious, I do, I agree. I, I give it a good three years and then there's gonna be trouble. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and by the way, the trouble is probably started now, yep. planning the wedding, yep. but nobody can back but out. in three years, it's gonna blow you know, up. Like, she's probably like, what? Mm -hmm. I can't go to Malibu and hang out on the beach? Uh-huh. I don't care that you'll buy me a beach. I don't want this corny beach. I wanna go to Malibu with my friends and be cool. Uh -huh. Wait, I can't wear a bikini? Mm -hmm. I have to wear one piece with a muumuu -moo over it? <laughs> or whatever the royal, whatever the royal, those rules, everybody, look, it's cute to be engaged to royal, but after you settle into the relationship and realize what you really have to do to be royal, if you are a 35-year-old woman who's been married before, a Hollywood actress who was engaged and didn't even see her fiance, sent the, mail, uh, sent the ring back in the mail, she was dating the chef while she met Harry, left the chef through, what? Oh, I thought you said something. Yeah, yes, you all. Uh -huh. Left the chef through text. Oh. With his spatula, he's like, what happened? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Also, um, this, this um, Thomas said that the father wasn't invited, which is a lie. We found out, it was confirmed by People magazine, that the father will be going to the wedding. So, you know, he's, he's reading up on his, on his English and uh, English ways. But I do believe that um, eventually, I mean, who wouldn't crack under pressure? It's not like she's getting married at 19 like Diana, and Diana was already English, so she always was raised with that protocol. Even the other one, Kate. Kate is English, she married young. They went to college together. She already knew the protocol. This Megan is coming in a divorcee <laughs> in her mid-30s from Crenshaw. <laughs> I mean, anyway, you can read the letter and all the other stuff. It's all on the, um, in the In Touch magazine, which is on newsstands now. The following story, it pains me to tell you, but I've got to say this has been going on for more than a decade. Oh. Little Kim. Little Kim's mansion in New Jersey is being auctioned off. Starting bid, let me get through the story, okay? This has been going on for a long time. Back when I was on the radio and this show wasn't even a thought we were talking about this mansion. I'm surprised that the banks let her like string along for so long. Cause you know, if your house was in foreclosure or your house is in foreclosure, they come in and swoop that, you got a week to get out, right? So the starting bid is $100, oh. but, but I will, I, excuse me, excuse me, I will have you know that my Norman bid $103. <laughs> A lovely 6,000 square foot house in a uh, well-appointed Alpine, New Jersey, bought by little Kim in 2002 for $2.3 million. Now you would think if you bought a mansion back in back at that time and you're still making some money, uh, well, I don't know what she was doing with her money, but little Kim at this point is 43 three years old. That's too old to be not understanding, you know, maybe a mansion is too much for you and royalty and you don't have to impress us by living in a mansion. You can live in a condo and stuff. I, here's my thought and follow me what I'm telling you, because I'm a fan of Little Kim, but I also understand the old school and it's really, really sad. I think that Little Kim is more concerned about her public persona than she ever was about financial responsibility. At 43 years old, this is a woman who has, she's got her daughter now, um, she's got that man, Mr. Papers, I don't know where he is. <laughs> but you know, a lot of times people's names are the total opposite of what they are. 
I don't even know where they're together. You know, she goes to jail, she comes out of jail, she lands a job on the, um, the um, a, a, a Greer show, you know, remember the comedian? Then she was a judge on one of the judge shows. I mean, she had chances. She, look, long before all these other rap stresses were standing up against Donatella Versace and stuff, Queen B was doing that. <laughs> she was doing that. And she could still, and I'm sure she's still friends with all these people, but she's so busy spending more time on surgery and fillers. I'm calling it like I see it. I'm calling it the way I see it. And the image, you know, the new Fendi bag or whatever, and Kim, man, this, this is not a good look. And then one person in our Hot Topics meeting said, well, you know, I'm sure she's still cool with Donatella. Donatella should give her a line. I said, no, because she has done things to her body that a lot of designers do not want that body as, as a spokesperson. They might not mind you wearing their clothes, but they do not want that body as their spokesperson. And I don't know what her best earning years are. I think that they might be behind her. You know, she, she does one or, one or two of those shows. Maybe you can open for Mariah a couple of dates in, in Vegas, <laughs> you know? But that, that's not gonna get the mansion back. You don't even need a mansion. Would you buy a, the mansion that belonged to little Kim? You gotta figure all the weed smoke, <laughs> season them. You rip back the carpet and you see all kinds of stuff. You're like, oh. Anyway, if you're interested, uh, the auction begins next Friday. Norman already has his $103, so so far you're the, you're, yes, you're not moving in. And we've got more great show for you today. Listen, the cast of Dear White People is here. But up next, Van Jones is on the couch. So grab a snack and come on back.